BBOR, Black Box, Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And the first thing to say, just to drop a couple of announcements here, thank you to everybody who checked out our interview with Drew Beeson about the Zodiac Killer and his suspect, Don Chaney. And we have now assembled the segments of the interview into a four-part playlist, which includes the interview, as well as the follow-up notes, the um, things that we said as in somewhat of a YouTube afterward, if you will. And the playlist is going to be available in the description box here to anybody who hasn't heard our interview with Drew Beeson about the Zodiac Killer and his suspect, Don Chaney, once again, in the description box. Moving on to today's topic, we are revisiting a particular mystery. And I mean, what exactly would you like to say about this one? Which angle do you choose? Is this something about the Black Dahlia? Is this about Dr. George Hill Hodel and some of the other criminal activities that he was going on? And I simply thought that if we were going to talk about this type of material, let's explore this from the perspective of Fauna Hodel, who became the centerpiece of the miniseries on TNT, I Am the Night, which came out in 2019. I made one upload about that series like The Life of George Hodel and Fauna Hodel on this channel. And we also have a George Hodel playlist talking about some other things, particularly his connections to the Zodiac Killer. But I thought it'd be great to do something more about Fauna Hodel, his granddaughter, as opposed to George Hill Hodel, who perhaps could be the root of all evil himself. So to give a bit of an introduction about Fauna Hodel, she was born on August 1st, 1951, and died on September 30th, 2017. But still, she served as an executive producer on the series I Am The Night, which once again came out in 2019. I got it on Hulu. We got the, um, well, I borrowed an account from Hulu from somebody I actually used my free trial last year. But um, when I wanted to say about Fauna Hodel. What I wanted to say about her is very simple. She is somebody who went looking for her life story and encountered just a host of bizarre, dark, sinister secrets that came out about the Hodel family. And perhaps you've heard her uncle, Steve Hodel, talk a lot about how he believes that his father was the Black Dahlia Avenger, the murderer of Elizabeth Short. But with Fauna Hodel, she was given up for adoption very early on in life. And some of the things that um, really surprised everyone were that she was actually told that she was half white and half black. And in the miniseries, I Am the Night, Fauna Hodel is played by the actress India Isley, and who is, of course, a Caucasian. And th th one of the things that Fauna Hodel would go on to learn in life is that it wasn't true that she was half black and half white. She was Caucasian. And that her mother simply thought that she had bad relationships with white people. So, and she thought that black people had a very good sense of family. So that's why she made up this story about how her daughter was half white and half black. Even on the birth certificate, it says unidentified Negro male. I mean, we're dealing with 1951. Please excuse my language. But, I mean, obviously that wasn't true. I mean, Tamar Hodel was the person who accused George Hill Hodel of sexual assault in 1949. They even had a trial. And, I mean, the trial sided with George Hodel. But, of course, you really have to wonder about all of that. And all, by almost all accounts, it seems like sexual misconduct did indeed occur from George Hodel, molestation, even the rape of his daughter, Tamar Hodel. But uh, so, that, I mean, that was obviously a fabrication. She was most likely just trying to distance Fauna Hodel from anything to do with the Hodel family. One of the things that I'm, I really felt uh, was not maybe represented very clearly on the show I Am the Night was that because Fauna Hodel was a Caucasian growing up, I was like, do you see her sitting in the section with the other African-Americans during segregation? And I was like, does anybody seem to um, think that that is rather bizarre? Like, you know, they're on a bus or something. No one is like looking twice at her. No one's calling her out. And one of the things that I learned from the videos that Fauna Hodel had uploaded onto YouTube is that she would actually carry her birth certificate around with her normally. So when she would be getting on buses, she would show them hey, look, yes, indeed, I am mixed race. My father was African-American. There are people in the series I Am the Night that do point out the saying there's no possible way that she is um, 
half white and half black because obviously she would have very dominant Caucasian features. I would say that there are a handful of photos of Fauna Hodel, and you can pull these up on Google. They even showed some of them at the end of the miniseries, I Am the Night. Like after each episode, they would put up some photos of, um, you know, real life pictures of people like Fauna Hodel and um, Tamar Hodel and some of the other people, even some of the artwork of an individual named Man Ray, which would come up later on. And they would show the photos and you could see a little bit of a resemblance to an African-American, like only in certain pictures. Like I learned this new term about like white passing, black passing, like if somebody is mixed race, biracial, I'm even biracial. And then you would see that um, they are white passing if they're predominant, have predominantly Caucasian features. Whereas if someone is, you know, like biracial, but they have predominantly African-American features, and they would be called black passing. I don't know how widely accepted this is. In a few photos of Fauna Hodel, you could almost see some African-American features. It's really quite remarkable. But um, about that, it's like she does seem a little bit black passing, only in certain aspects. And by the time she was into her adulthood, absolutely not. I mean, we're only talking about as a kid, like you could see some of that. And that was one of the reasons why Fauna Hodel t entitled her memoir. She titled her memoir, excuse me, One Day She'll Darken, because that was one of the things that her adoptive mother said about to people that, you know, Fauna Hodel is, of course, very, very caucasoid, and that one day she'll darken what became the title of her memoir. Also, it, when I was looking into things to do with Fauna Hodel, I found that on her YouTube channel, simply called Fauna Hodel, just like it's uh, spelled here in the title, she even has an audio clip of Tamar Hodel, her mother. And I think that um, it's very good to uh, have these opportunities to hear Tamar Hodel in her own words. And we're just going to play the audio clip right now. When we're in bed and everything that night. Spoke about you know, what happened? Why was she given away? And what had happened? I explained to her about the incest trial of my father. And she hadn't known anything about that. I thought my mother surely would have told her why she was given away and uh, how I was aboard of the court and everything, but she, she hadn't. So it was a big shock to her. And that was just a very small uh, clip there, but it's one of the few chances that we get to hear Tamara Hodel speaking on YouTube. And you see, though, that um, a lot of these secrets were kept from Fauna Hodel. And if you'd like to hear more of these interviews, once again, on Fauna Hodel's channel, you can find more. And there was a very particular one because that I would highly recommend to everybody. And it's a promotional video for something called Behind the Smile. I repeat, Behind the Smile, which was a documentary that was made about... Um, the life of Fauna Hodel. And after Fauna Hodel would pass away, we heard that video clip there, her daughters would go on to say that Fauna Hodel was very meticulous with record keeping. She was very meticulous with all of the details in her life. I mean, it's possible that her father was the Black Dahlia Avenger, the murderer of Elizabeth Short, and she wanted to know the truth about her family. So she kept everything in this massive storage container. And then because of that, like, they had all of this information. And the daughters of Fauna Hodel actually launched their own podcast called Root of Evil. And I believe, though, if I heard correctly, they did an appearance on the Dr. Phil show, and they were saying that they did not even really like that title too much, but um, that was something that perhaps that the producers had chosen for them. But at the same time, though, it was called Root of Evil, not to mention that they were the root of evil, but obviously to say that George Hill Hodel was the root of all evil. But it, there's something very, um, very alluring about this because you're just dealing with darkness. You're just dealing with perhaps incest. It is entirely possible that Fauna Hodel was the biological child of George Hill Hodel. But one of the questions that somebody was asking is, is this guy who's perhaps the Black Dahlia Avenger, it, did they ever confirm 
that George Hodel was Fauna Hodel's father, meaning that he would be both her grandfather and her father, that he raped Tamar Hodel, and this was one of the things associated with the trial. And the answer to that is it was unproven. As far as I understand, it was just purely unproven. What I can say is that Steve Hodel, George's son, who has been spending his entire life post-detective trying to vilify his father as the Black Dolly Avenger, or trying to prove that his father was the Black Dolly Avenger, as well as the Zodiac Killer. But Steve Odell has done an enormous amount of effort and an enormous amount of work put in to try and confirm this, and he's made a very convincing case. But what he says is he does not believe that George Hodel was the father of Fauna Hodel. I didn't expect to see him on Dr. Phil when I was just Googling and Fauna Hodel and YouTubing Fauna Hodel and trying to read up and learn more about her. I, I encountered this clip of the Dr. Phil show, and Steve Hodel said in his own words that Tamar Hodel confessed to him that George Hodel was not Fauna's father, but the father of Fauna Hodel was an Italian-American who had raped her. And I would actually like to read something right now about some of the materials that uh, Fauna Hodel had wanted to share with people, telling the story about her family. And this comes to us from the YouTube channel of Bobby Mardis, M-A-R-D-I-S. This is the story of Fauna Hodel and her life. She was given away as a baby to a black family and found out that her grandfather was the number one suspect in the Black Dahlia murder. A movie was made about her life, but was mysteriously hidden away two days before the production was completed. This is a truly compelling story that is being made into the documentary. And um, the movie that he's talking about is called Pretty Hattie's Baby. I hope I got that right, because it sounds a little bit confusing. Like, there is a documentary that they were able to make called Behind the Smile, perhaps uh, talking about Elizabeth Short or perhaps talking about the smile that Fauna was forced to wear growing up, believing her life was a lie. But the thing is, they all they were trying to make another movie called Pretty Hattie's Baby, and I was like, I have to see this. But as you heard, some of the uh, footage has been archived. If it is ever around, I will try and locate it. Now, a lot of people want to know, what really was it about George Hill Hodel that was so overwhelming, that was so powerful? This guy, he's a doctor. How did he get away with all this? And in the show, I Am the Knight, they have some conversations about this by saying that, number one, George Hodel became an abortionist to the Hollywood elites because abortion was illegal at the time. We're dealing with the 1940s, the 1950s, and uh, I Am the Night is set even in the 1960s. Abortion was still illegal, of course, till the 1970s in the United States of America. And number one, George Hodel was not content being just the abortionist to the Hollywood elites. He he wanted to, as um to quote a part of the of the show I Am the Night, just say that. He was fascinated with surrealist art, but the surrealist artists he knew only were able to create that in fantasy world. They weren't able to put the fantasy into reality, and he had this goal of transcending um, the world of fantasy with the world of surrealist art and the world of reality all into one, and that was one of the motivations for some of the crimes that he committed, such as the murder of Elizabeth Short. Big nutshell version, but that is more or less the idea. He was also heavily inspired by an individual named Man Ray, who was a photographer, as well as, I mean, inspired was an understatement. He was very passionate about the connections to surrealism, states of being and reality, and as well as just thinking that he was so intelligent that he was above the law. In addition to simply being an abortionist to the Hollywood elites, George Hodel also began to work for the L.A. County Health Bureau, and he was in charge of the issues associated with venereal diseases, like the unit dealing with venereal diseases, sexually transmitted diseases and infections in California, working with Hollywood elites. And in the show, I Am the Night, they were like, George Hill Hotel is powerful, not only because he is working with the local government officials in California, like not only because he has dirt on the politicians and the governmental workers, not only because he has connections to the Hollywood elites and he knows the dirty secrets of the rich and powerful people behind the Hollywood films. You know, think about the people who are financing the films with their millions of dollars. Not only that, but also because of that, he was able to get access to the organized crime families, to the mob, to the mafiosos, to the people who were associated with 
large level illegal activity. So organized crime, Hollywood, local government, all of these people had connections to George Hill Hotel, and he became an influential member of the California elites, as well as the California underground elites. And he was um, someone who had an enormous amount of ability to use power to his advantage. And you can definitely probably think of another few people that come to mind who had the ability to infiltrate the circles of oligarchy. Therefore, George Hill O'Dell could do lots of things and people would not touch him. And in the show, I Am the Night, the character play, the, um, the actress playing Tamar Hodell, we shouldn't really say character because she is a real person. You heard her voice at the beginning of this recording. The actress playing Tamar Hodell was saying very clearly that the universe is protecting George Hodell. And I'm like, yeah, it is the universe, but it is also these circles of corruption in Southern California that he is a, that he has infiltrated organized crime, Hollywood elites, local government and politicians. So he was able to use that to his advantage to try and manipulate the power process. Well, okay. So somebody like Fauna Hodell is learning this all in stages. And she even says, though, in the uh, trailer for the documentary Behind the Smile, that she was able to reconnect with the Hodell family. Tamar Hodell, of course, was living in Hawaii. You can actually hear the Hawaiian waves in the background on that audio recording that we played earlier. And as well as there's even a photo of Steve Hodell in there. And um, I guess Steve Hodell has made his stances very clear. He believes with certainty that his father was the Black Dahlia Avenger. And when stirring uh, Steve Hodell's research for that, he really says very clearly that they found out that George Hill Hodell was the prime suspect in the Black Dahlia murder case. And the police really were aware of this. They knew this from the beginning, that he was most likely the prime suspect. But we should also say, though, that there were additional suspects in the Black Dahlia murder. And perhaps we can talk about this in um, in a future upload, The Murder of Elizabeth Short. So the whole point is, you have these elite power circles, and then you have somebody like Fauna Hodel who is simply just trying to learn her story. And one of the parts, though, that I would say is unsolved, and that is that George Hill Hodel was never confirmed to be her biological father. And if you do a Google search on Fauna Hodel, you'll see that her mother is listed as Tamar Hodel. But um, there is this one scene in I Am the Night. I really don't like to give away spoilers, but she asks, can I call you mom? And she says, no. And I think that was a reference to something that she's trying to say something to the effect of, I mean, I might be your mother, but I'm also your half sister. However, it just appears to be unconfirmed. One of the things that I would say in counterbalance to Steve Hodell's claim that Tamar Hodell confessed to him that George Hill Hodell was not Fauna's father, that she was raped by the Italian American. I mean, sometimes people process tragedy in a very particular way. And I really don't want to say too much because I don't want to speculate and um, say something that, um, you know, like isn't completely true. So I want to be very clear that I'm laying it out as a possibility, but sometimes people process tragedy in a way, in their own way. So she's talking to this guy, Steve Hodell, who's also George Hill Hodell's son. I mean, sometimes people don't always share the most um, forthcoming information about that, especially if you're going to talk about something as heinous as being raped by your own father. But, um, Tamar Hodell was also willing to go public with this during the accusations and the trial, 1949, all of that. So then there's also that aspect of it. But I mean, I just have to say, I would like to reinforce that point, man, that a point, even if you don't connect it to Tamar Hodell, sometimes people process tragedy in their own way. And Fauna Hodell really wanted the series I Am the Night to come out because she wanted to tell her story. She wanted the, the world to know everything that was going on about her and about the um, Hodell family, and particularly about, as we said, Root of Evil. That's the name of the podcast that her daughters are doing. They wanted to show that George Hodell was someone who was able to manipulate the power system and do destructive things. And there's some other possible reasons for this. It's more just like the great... It's not only the great desire to be an artist. Many people desire to be an artist, but then they don't resort to these very destructive issues. It also reminds us of our conversations about Machiavellian personalities. People who think that they are so intelligent that they are above the law. But the problem is, though, with somebody like George Hodel, he actually had the connections to Southern California oligarchs to back it all up. And then it just turns into a uh, disgusting quagmire of events. And I do mean disgusting because like the murder of Elizabeth Short was very heinous. And no matter what people say about her, she did not deserve to die. No matter what rumors people are going to be digging up. And the same would go true, go as well for somebody like Fauna Hodel, who was given up at birth. And, you know, she's living this lie most of her 
most of her uh, youth that she believes that she is African American or half black, half white, and they just try to say that she is a white passing uh, mixed race individual. Um, but um, I like, like I, I would just like to reinforce that. Like they they do show you that some people like there is no possible way that this girl is half black in the show. But I mean, I think it was very eye opening when she said that she carried around her birth certificate to show people all the time. But very simply, it just that was not true. I'm not sure who to believe more, Steve Hodell and his claim, or to believe the possibility that George Hill Hodell was genuinely Fauna Hodell's father. But Fauna Hodell has since passed on. But what her daughter said was that they had a certain sense of comfort in knowing that their mother's story was going to be told through the miniseries I Am the Night, which is currently available on Hulu. It was originally available on the um on uh, TNT, but now it is on Hulu. And there was a YouTube out, YouTuber that made a very good video about this. I've cited her at least twice on this channel. Her name is Caitlin Jane. She did the true story behind I Am The Night. Very good video on that as well. And once again, for us, our playlist on Drew Beeson and the Zodiac Killer is in the description box here. If you have anything to say at all, please drop a comment below. And if you like to upload, you can hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. I will see you on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.